Hi everyone. I'm going to try to make this video fast and this is going to be about the Founding Fathers Great Law of Peace where the two, how, how this Constitution, this Republic um, came together and what's missing and there was an agenda. But first, because I've used this before in videos and uh, I saw someone use this yesterday and you know who you are. I'm not going to call out some people right now because, um, well, you know who you are. And the definition of a patriot, I, I'd like to give you that. So all of you who call yourself patriots, uh, the government loves you. Because uh, a patriot, it, he, um, the one, one who loves his or her country and supports its authority and interest, that is the definition. I will leave that below. In the link. Now I wanted to talk to you about our founding fathers. They had to sit with clan mothers of the Iroquois Confederacy. That's how the whole Constitution concept got um, started. Now briefly, I would like to leave the whole Great Law of Peace or tell you about it, but it's very long and it's broken down really fast and I'm going, I've, I did this before and I'll read it again and um, so you had, I think it was Franklin Adams and Jefferson that sat down with a group of clan mothers from the uh, Iroquois Confederacy. And um, they wanted to learn how these people had such a true republic. The only true republic that has ever been found that represented every person. And it started in the 12th century, 11 AD, after mass blood. And, and people will debate me on this, but... I don't because I, I I'll I'll disprove you. Okay, so um, they had to go and, and and I'm gonna even leave under here um, the, where it is written. The United States Senate has acknowledged that our law, the Iroquois, served as a model for the Constitution of the United States. And I'm gonna leave where it's, it is. And the U.S. Constitution was in turn a model for the Charter of the United Nations. Our law is the basis of modern international law. The Americans copied our laws and customs, but they did not understand them. Now, the Founding Fathers had an agenda. Um, a lot of people know that, um, and a lot of people don't. But here, I'm going to read the, the, the things that, that they should have completely took seriously. Um, Here's the three main points, and, and I'm, I'm going to also leave the original Great Law piece, but you probably will have trouble reading through it. Mm. Let me see. Sorry about this. That was anonymous. It's anonymous is always calling me. Never answer them. Uh, okay, the Americans copied our laws and customs, but they did not understand them. Our ancestors recognized the sovereignty of all men and women by solving community conflicts through discussion in a people's council. In our tradition, three criteria must be kept in mind through all deliberations. Listen to this, please. Listen with your heart. Peace. Meaning, peace must be kept at all cost. Now, you remember, I'm trying to tell you that in 11 AD or the 12th century, prior to that, there was a lot of wars and bloodshed on this North American continent. They got tired of it, and they had to come up with something. And what they came up with, our founding fathers thought it was perfect, but they tweaked it because they needed an agenda and money and control. All right, so you got the peace at all cost. Peace must be the complete consideration of everything. Righteousness. Meaning decisions must be morally right. Taking into consideration the needs of seven generations um, to come. Now I'm going to explain that really quick. That means that you're, what you do now has to, whatever you do and walk in this life, you're supposed to make a better world for at least seven generations. That's why I always say, I do this for my children and my grandchildren, my great-grandchildren, and so forth. I am responsible. I, I am responsible. That's it. So remember that. Righteousness means meaning decisions must be morally 
Right. Taking into consideration the needs of seven generations to come. That is powerful. Power. That's the third one I'm going to put up. Meaning the power of the people must be maintained, including the equal sovereignty of all men and women. All. No one was left out. No one was left out. Conflicts between nations were also resolved through diplomacy and consensus. I mean, uh, the, the consensus was everybody had to agree. There was no two-thirds majority. Everyone had to agree. So sometimes things were talked out for a long time, and maybe that's what needs to happen. Because what I see in what we call government, things are just... Okay, and signed away. Okay, signed away, rubber stamped. No one debates, talks, or even looks at we, the people. All right. Um, war, or the use of violence, was only as a last resort. Even then, the women and children of the opponents were spared. Throughout our ancestors I always respected the other nations' different customs, laws, and ways of life, whether they approved of them or not. They would work out agreements on how to live side by side. You see, after, in the 12th century, they realized we are creation. And we got to take care of one another, regardless. We've got to. Warfare didn't solve a damn thing, so now we have to learn how to live together. Now, the Founding Fathers sat down and talked with these clan mothers of the Iroquois Confederacy. The problem is, if they would have followed the whole Great Law of Peace, and I will leave it because it tells you how they, they did each step, and it's very long and probably a hard and boring read for you, although you probably should read it. Um, the, the whole jest I'm trying to make is, if they would have followed the whole Great Law of Peace, you would be free right now. We would not be stripping the earth of all of its natural resources. We would not have this divide and conquer and chaos. There would be debates. And that means you would be included in the debates. You'd have knowledge of everything that was happening. Everything was completely transparent. Everything. Wars were, if they were fought, if they had to be fought, they actually had a moral code, and it's called the Code of Warrior, and I'll even leave that up. How you should act in warfare. It's not like the people here act. You know, kill first, ask questions later, have no consciousness about it. I'm going to leave all this, and I just thought I would throw this out there, and um, thanks to a friend who put up a video about the patriots being patriotic. Because I actually have used that like last year in a video and got all booed and, and you know, hissed at. But I'm going to leave the definition this time under here. There will be links below. Um, so I think everybody, um, knowledge is power, but it really is. It's a powerful thing, but you also have to use your heart because you have to recognize it that the, we as the world needs to come together and look for seven generations to make this world a better place. And I don't like governments. I like the great law of peace, which the founding fathers psyoped. And disturbingly, it, it's disturbing to me that they even called it government. We did not call it government. It was a great law of peace. That's the, the law. Um, and government itself is a psyop word like patriot. I mean, government, to govern means to control, meant the mind. They had it all figured out. There was an agenda. Now, if you disagree, all right, I have a question. Would you rather be following the great law of peace, where you would be free right now? Or do you like the agenda that was laid out before you by those founding fathers who could have took the first, the only true republic that's ever been known to mankind came from these savage Indians? Or would you rather have it? I just would like you to leave your answers below. I wanted to make this short. I do love you all. And I want us not to be divided. I want us to, to not be apathetic either. Let's think. Think before we speak. And don't just needlessly follow other people who say, 
um, this is wrong, this is wrong. Don't be self-righteous. Don't, don't. Look for your, look, be responsible for what is going on and look for the future generations. That is what I've always done. I've always said it. I know a lot of you do too, but we've got to make this a better world. This whole earth needs to be better for the rest of humanity for generations to come. I do love you all. I'm going to get off of here so you can enjoy your day. Um, I hope you watch this, and I love you.